Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. I wanted to do this outside but it's raining today. It's getting back to raining again for a little bit before we hit summer hardcore. Um, it was a little cold this morning too and I already started putting everything away from the fire so I could, didn't start the fire, the, the, the wood stove. Um, so I'm just trying to bear with it because we're supposed to have a few rains, supposed to, temperature's supposed to drop a little bit today and tomorrow and then it'll get back up to being hot again. So what we're doing here is a series of videos, Brothers of Christ. We'll get back to our study. We will, Brothers of Christ, back to our study. Are you looking uh, for that blessed hope? Okay, are you looking? And we're going to get back to prove your own selves. And remember we did wisdom. we got to do righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Okay, wisdom, the fear of the Lord. If you fear God, you keep His commandments. But if you may to wisdom, we fear God, and we take God's Word, and we hide in our heart, and we try to live it because we fear God, and we love God. Okay, we fear God and we love God. If a man love me, he will keep my words. We're going to get into righteousness. We're going to be getting into the armor, the chess piece of righteousness, and how Jesus' righteousness is imputed to us and how we are bought with a price. We're representatives, ambassadors for Jesus Christ. We're going to get into sanctification. You know, the thing that the easy believism is against hardcore. They just, oh, you just believe. Just believe in your head and that's it. And you're saved and everything. But it says if you're truly saved, if you're in Christ Jesus, these are the four things that determine whether you're in Christ Jesus our Lord. One of those four things is sanctification. There's no sanctification. You're not in Christ Jesus. If you're still looking like the world, acting like the world, living like the world, and just claiming belief, head belief, you're not saved. You're not in Christ Jesus our Lord. And also redemption. Our bodies, we're going to get into how we're two-thirds redeemed, and we're waiting for that third part to be redeemed, this body of wicked flesh. We're waiting for the catching away of the body of Christ, that blessed hope. And you have brethren that turn their back on it. You have the lost world that's trying to talk people out of it, and then you have brethren that are, in these last days, they're turning them back on the imminent return of Jesus Christ, looking for that blessed hope. We'll get back into those studies. I really want to get back into those studies, but brothers and sisters Christ, there are times where I've got... There are brethren that ask me questions, and they want to talk about this, and they want to talk about that, so I have to try to get these in here from time to time. And the other thing that we talked about, Brother Sis Christ, is that why I'm, I'm trying my best only to put out one or two videos. If they're small videos, put out a couple videos a week. Um, if they're a large video, put out one video a week, because Brother Sis Christ, you should be watching other brethren in ministry, godly men, who are actual Bible believers, okay, King James Bible believers, uh, not Bible deniers, okay. Bible deniers, um, Holy Scripture deniers, okay, I'll say it like that. Um, okay. Make sure you're following more than one man so you don't fall into that cult atmosphere, that cultic mentality where I worship this one man and I have to follow him. If he falls to the left, I have to follow the left. If he falls to the right, I have to he's the only man out there that's preaching the God, the truth. I've had people that are so brainwashed that have that attitude. There's more. I'm not the only man out here standing for the truth. Okay, There's, there's several men out there trying to stand for the truth. Uh, we all have our failings, our faults, uh, different areas where we need work and help You know, uh, when it comes to our walk with the Lord. But there's plenty of men out there that love the Lord, that actually love the brethren, actually know what charity is. Okay? Um, and have charity for the body of Christ, right? and love, true love for the body of Christ, not just in words, but in deed, okay? So that's why I'm just saying, I put out, I'm going to try, I try to put out one video a week to, because uh, I know the brethren out there that love the word, love the Lord, they're not part of an occult, they're watching more than one person, and you guys don't have time to watch 50 million videos <laughs> in one week. Some might, some might, uh, you know. But some of you are working hard to provide for your own. To provide for your own. Uh, you're doing your... The other big thing was is that I was pushing Brothers of Christ is despite all the videos you're watching online, one thing I put a challenge out to the people and I didn't get bit, that big of a response to it was is that are you spending more time in prayer and reading and studying the scriptures for yourself equal or more time than you spend watching Bible studies and dusting off your Bible and just sitting down and watching Bible studies online or if let's say you're going to a Bible building you brush your dust, you dust your Bible off because it's time to go to the Bible building do you spend more time in this book on your own with the Lord in prayer and one-on-one -on -one? Right? 
that's a good challenge. I had started looking at myself and said, okay, God showed me so much through brethren, through studies with brethren. Okay, it's now it's time for me to start hiding this book in my heart and living it. It's time for me to get serious about this book. Not be part of a club, not putting on a show, but be serious about this book. God's perfect written word, the King James Bible. So get out the King James Bible, brothers of Christ. Like I said, I plan to do this outside where it's more of a sit and talk. So I wasn't going to plan on turning, so I put a lot of stuff in here so we could get through it quick and just say, hey, this is something that a brother in Christ was asking and he wanted to talk about. And what it was is, what will become of women at the resurrection? But the question, actual question he asked is, what are your thoughts on the theory that female members of the body of Christ will become male at the catching up? Okay. And before we get into this, we're going to talk a little bit about what angels are. But I also want to talk a little bit about cherub. Okay, uh, 33rd book. I don't know if I, if I didn't, I'll, I'll put his video on my channel also. The reason I double videos is because if his gets taken down, it's still out there. Okay, I used to do this a lot with a lot of brethren. I, I put their videos on my channel, not because I'm trying to take all the credit from me. The whole point was is some of the brethren can get, that are in ministry can get very prideful. They can get very arrogant and they, they push YouTube's buttons too much to the point where YouTube will shut them down. It's not that they're standing for truth and YouTube just shuts them down. They're actually poking the bear. Okay, uh, I'm not going to go into that too much, but they're poking the bear. And they get strikes and then they get shut down. Uh, what about all those good teachings that they did? Well, that's the whole point. I, I, I put teachings out, uh, re-upload other brothers' teachings that are good teachings. 33rd book did a good teaching on cherubs and seraphim. But on cherubs. And the only reason I mention that as we get to talking about angels is because did you know cherubs can sin? Did you know angels can sin? Today, if you look around, a lot of these false religions, they have this big um, occult worship of things like cherubs and angels around the world. All these pagan religions try to make up their own cherubs and uh, the whole thing about angel worship and cherub worship. We worship cherubs and angels because they're just so holy. Do you know they can sin? Okay. Um, I didn't put this in my notes for the cherub, but Isaiah 14, verse 12. This is talking about Satan. It says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down from the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou... Has said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. And I'm going to show a parallel passage that talks about him being a cherub. Okay. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Jesus, uh, Satan gets thrown in the bottomless pit for a thousand years. Then he gets thrown in the lake of fire. Ye shall be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Here's the thing. Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake in the nations, that made the world as wilderness, and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners? Is this the man? Remember what the Bible says. Satan transforms himself into an angel of light. This gets into our study here. Into an angel of light. What's an angel? He, he appears as a man. And light is another way of saying a wise man. A man of great wisdom and knowledge. Okay, But he appears as a man. Angels don't have wings. Okay, I always try to, I, I don't, I'm not getting mad at my brothers in Christ that when they're preaching, uh, I mean, Peter Ruckman is one of them, I'll name him by name, Peter Ruckman, he would draw angels with wings and then he will admit angels don't have wings and yet he still consistently kept drawing them with wings and using excuses why he would draw them with wings. Why would you perpetuate a lie for anyone? Why wouldn't you stand for the truth for Jesus Christ? Why would you perpetuate a lie to please the world? Yeah, I had to get very dramatic about that because it's like, you can say, I'm going to stick for the truth and please God and tell the world, hey, you're wrong. 
this is the truth. You're wrong there, this is the truth. You're wrong there, this is the truth. Angels don't have wings, so I'm not going to draw them with wings. I'm not going to have anything to do with angels that have wings because they don't have wings. Instead of pleasing God, he tended to please the crowd. And he always had to make that point. Every time he drew angels with wings, he'd always say they don't have wings. Then why draw them with wings? Oh, because people think they have wings and they wouldn't know it's an A. You can draw a big A on their chest and say, okay, this is an angel. You, there's a lot of things you could have done without catering and pleasing the lost world. Angels don't have wings. But Satan transforms himself into an angel of light. And no marvel that his ministers also be transformed in the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. It says here, is this the man that made the earth to tremble? Now, you do the study on cherubim, brothers and sisters of Christ, uh, watch that study. I'll put up the link in the comment section of 33rd book, Cherubims. Okay. He does a great teaching on it. They have three faces, or four faces. There was originally five cherubim. Satan was one. And his face was that of a snake. And you have four other cherubim, and one is an eagle, one is a bull, one is a man. And oh, I forgot the fourth one. Sorry, Brother Jesus Christ. I'm trying to go through a bull, eagle, man. Lion. Lion. It's the face of a lion. Thank you, Lord. So that's the four faces. And it talks about how they can share each other's faces. So it wouldn't be a surprise if that cherubim, that fifth cherubim, can share the faces of these four right here. So why is Satan going around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour? Because one of the faces of a cherubim is a lion. Okay? One of the faces of a cherubim is, is a man. He transforms himself into an angel of light. Okay? But in that study, you look into it, the actual face of a cherub is a bull. That's why they always depiction Satan as a red dragon. So the, the picture of Satan is a bull with bull horns. And he's red, and he's got that tail like a snake. Okay, A lot of it does come from the scriptures when they're trying to detail that. But the point here is when he transforms into an angel of light, he comes across as a man. Not with wings, even though a cherub has wings. But to truly deceive people into thinking he's an angel of light, he, has no, he, he hides his wings. Okay? And he appears as a man, not a woman. A man. Um... In Ezekiel 28, 14 is where we see, thou art, thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. Talk about Satan. And have set thee so, thou wast upon the holy mountain of God, thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in the ways from the days that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. Iniquity. But the multitude of, the merchant, of thy merchandise... They have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mouth, mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. What's the big point about this? Brothers and Christ, when you see people that are getting into worshiping things like cherubs and seraphim, and you see them get into, and we're going to get into here, worshiping angels, uh, angels can sin. Cherubs can sin. They're not perfect. They, they, they can be in a perfect state. This talks about it. But they can sin. Why don't they worship someone who's never sinned before? God the Father manifest in the flesh, the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Why don't they like worshiping Him? He was perfect. He never sinned. He'll always be perfect. Because... They don't want Him. They don't want truth. They want the world. And the world will give them all these things to worship, and you look at them and you go, those of us who are saved, born again, you get God's Word, you hide in your heart, you study it, and you're like, you're worshiping things that, that actually they're worshiping Satan that sinned, uh, fallen angels that sinned, because in the Bible, angels, when men tried to fall down and worship angels, the good ones, they were told, don't do it. Worship God. Don't worship me, worship God. Okay? So, like I said, make sure you have your King James Bibles out. 
we're just going to be going through these really quick and just to talk with you and you guys can put in the comment section what God has shown you um, on this subject. But the question was asked, you know, do women become men? Because pe there's a teaching that we, that everyone, be we become angels someday. And like I said, they tend to, angels look like men as we're going to get through here. So the first thing we're going to start with is what are angels? So turn to Genesis chapter 19 verse 1. What are angels? Are they men and women with wings and little babies with wings? And then sometimes they call the little babies with wings cherubs, which that's not a cherub at all. Um, is that what it is? See, the Bible will tell us what things are, brother says Christ. 2 Timothy 2.15 Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. God will show us the truth in his word. Genesis 19.1 and there came two angels, these are angels, to Sodom at even. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face towards the ground, and he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. Now stop, he called them lords. When you read about the Old Testament, brothers and Christ, when angels appeared, there was just something about them that was a little bit different than a regular man. They're still a man, because I'm going to prove this, but there was something about them that made them stick out. Those who feared God would see them like Lot did and call them lords. They would come up to him trembling and falling on their knees, not to worship them, but there's something about these angels that's different than a regular man. I'm not saying these angels are just men, because we're going to get to this. They were created, men was created a little bit lower than the angels. They're above us. But I like to point that out, the lords. Okay. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him, and entered into his house. And he made them a feast, and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. Now, I heard a brother in Christ once say that they don't have a physical form, the angels. is like, I was like, are you kidding me? Yeah, they do. They can eat. They can hit. The, they have bodies. But their bodies were made higher than men's bodies. Okay? They're the bodies that we're going to get someday. The incorruptible. All right? And they did eat. But, they, but before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round about, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men? Where are the men which came unto thee this night? Bring them out unto us. Not angels, not creatures, because they got wings. They're creatures with wings. The creatures that came in unto you are angels. They, he, they said, Where are the men? Bring them to us that we may know them. Okay. Now, if you know your Bible, you know what know them means. Now stop to think about this. Look how Lot treated him when he saw him. Look, someone who feared God, look how he treated the angel. Look at the wicked people of Sodom who don't fear God. Look how they treated the angels. Can you see that out there in the world today? All these people that worship angels and everything? They're lost. They don't fear God. Those of us who fear God, we treat angels a lot differently than the lost world that doesn't fear God treats angels. Yeah. That we may know them. And Lot went out the door unto them and shut the door after them. But we point that I'm pointing out here. It says, where are the men? These two angels go into Sodom and Gomorrah and they're treated, they're looked as as men, not women, not creatures with wings, Pe men that look, it kind of looks like a man, but it's a creature that has a wing. No, they don't have wings. Okay, they're just men. Psalms eight four. This is the verse I was talking about. Psalms eight, chapter eight, verse four. Remember, you can pause the video, turn, unpause the video. What is man? that thou art mindful of him, and the Son of Man, that thou visitest him. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him in the glory of honor. 
Men were made a little lower than the angels. Women are taken out of man. I always like to point that out. Adam, once again, I get a lot of slack for this because th they think I'm, I'm being mean towards the women or saying the women are less than men. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just speaking from the Bible. We've done t studies on this, brothers and Christ. Adam was created in the image of God. The image is a physical image, something you can see. You can't see a soul. You can't see a spirit. What can you see? The body. Adam was made in the image of God. Adam and Eve were made in the likeness of God. You go to the New Testament, and it says that man were made in the image of God, but the woman was taken from man. Is the glory of the man. Why? Because women was taken from man. Remember the rib? God took a rib from Adam and created Eve. Now here's the thing, we have the image of God as far as we're men, but I still also like to believe that that image that Adam once held, that we will have someday, at the catching away of the body of Christ, when we get that image back, that body, that incorruptible body, this corruption shall put on incorruption, this mortal shall put on immortality. Now it doesn't say we're incorruptible, it just says this corruption, this body of corruption, will put on incorruption, we'll be given a new body that hasn't been corrupted. Okay, hasn't been corrupted at all, like this wicked body has. But that being said, I would say this, the image there that it's talking about, it says, God created man in the image of God, male and female created he them. He says, in the image of God, God created him, in the likeness of God, God created him. God created man, man and woman created he them. He separates the two types of creation. The image versus the likeness. And he separates it. Man was made in the image of God. Adam was. And Adam and Eve were made in the likeness of God. Body, soul, and spirit. Okay. That's just the facts. That's what the Bible teaches. But there's this tradition of men that keeps getting pushed, brothers and Christ, that we've always said everyone's made in the image of God. Everyone's made in the image of God. And you wonder why they have uh, Queen of Heaven. Goddesses. Okay, God is both equally masculine and feminine. How did he get all this junk? Because people don't want to stick to the Bible. Adam was made in the image of God. Adam and Eve were made in the likeness of God. Like I said, go through the Bible. I'm sorry to go off on this on a rabbit trail. Go through the Bible, brother, says Christ, on the word image. It's always something you can see. Even if you're picturing an image in your head, you're still picturing something you can see if you were to open your eyes. It's still a physical image. It's the body. Okay? That's what it's talking about. Adam was made in the, in the image of God. God has a body. And who's that body? We find out today it's Jesus Christ. But in the Old Testament, it was the angel of the Lord. That man. No, he's an angel of the Lord, but he's also a man. That man. The captain of the host of heaven. God had a body in the Old Testament. And it always came across as a man. Not a woman, not man and woman, it's a man, God is a man. And that man today is the man, there's one meaning between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Man. Okay. When we were taken out of man, 1 Corinthians 11, 7 says, For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image, here it is in the New Testament, he is the image and glory of God. Jesus Christ is the man's head covering, man is the woman's head covering, the woman is the children's head covering. It goes down that order, the order of authority. God, man, woman, child. Okay. And that's what this is talking about. But we see there it says, for as much as he is the image and glory of God. So why do they keep saying men and women are made in the image of God? No, they're not. Man was made in the image of God because God, and it's not talking about man as in mankind, it's talking about men. Men. God is a man. And as we learn in the study, all angels are men. They're not women. Okay? Uh, image of the glory of God. But, notice when you say but, it negates that part. But, this is just as important. What's just as important? The woman is the glory of the man. Women, you're not left out, sisters of Christ, like you're nothing. You're the glory of the man. You're, you're just as important. I'm not saying you're less important. or le Everything's always about being equal. I'm sorry, but men and women are not equal. God has a different set of boundaries for women. God has a different set of boundaries for men. I'm talking about when it comes to the flesh, the body, physically, the image, body. We're not equal. 
God has set different boundaries for both of us. Period. Things that the women are supposed to do, things that men are supposed to do. There's things that men will excel at, there's things that women will excel at, that men don't. God has boundaries. We're supposed to stay in those boundaries, but today, the biggest fight I get when I say that women are not made in the image of God, they're made in the likeness of God, is they're always getting upset. I'm saying, are you saying men and women aren't equal? Well, even without that statement, men and women aren't equal in the Bible. Okay? There's a boundary God set for women. There's a boundary God set for men. Men aren't to go in the women's boundary. Women are not supposed to go in the men's boundary. It's all through the Bible. Okay? You have mighty men in the Bible like the men that followed King David, but you have an angel that kills tons of people in one night. Going back to the verse up there with Psalms 8 where it says, men were made a little lower than the angels. If you ever try to, try to read... Um, it's in Chronicles. When you get into Chronicles, First and Second Chronicles, you start getting in where they start talking about some of the mighty men that were fighting with King David and some of the great things that they did. And they were amazing. They were very amazing. But you have angels. There's a passage, I forgot where it is, I don't have my notes. So there's a passage where it talks about an angel that killed a lot. It's in that study on angels that uh, 33rd book does in Cherub. Uh, they killed tons of people in one night. There was like 144,000, 140,000 plus in one night. One angel did that. Uh, we're made a little lower than the angels. Okay. Um, 1 Corinthians 13, 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels. Men have tongues. Angels have tongues. In the Old Testament... They both speak. It kind of lines them up together. Men and angels. Not man as in mankind, but men. Okay? And have not charity, I have become a sounding brass or a tingling cymbal. Okay? Men are the ones that are out there preaching the word of God. Okay? As far as, you know, teaching and preaching the word of God. Now, don't get me wrong, brothers, sisters in Christ. When it comes to witnessing, you can be a great witness for Jesus Christ. Hand out gospel tracts. Lay gospel tracts places. If a door opens and a guy does, thinks to be at the end of his ropes, it's the end of the world, what am I supposed to do? Is there any God out there? That's an open door for you to preach the gospel to him and be a witness for Jesus Christ. A verbal witness and a living witness. But when it comes to preaching and teaching the word of God, that's what men do. This whole push today that women can be preachers and everything, eh, no, that's against the scriptures. But here we have men and of angels. It's like in our, our talk, how we talk. Okay. Genesis 2, 6, 2, it says that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose. It says sons of God. Okay, now stop here for a second. Two things. One, these angels in the Old Testament left their first estate and came down. They sinned against God. They didn't come down and do what God told them to do, like the two angels in Sodom and, Egypt, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. There's a prophet that you see about the last days shall be as Sodom and Egypt. <clears throat> but Sodom and Gomorrah, they did what God told them to do. They got Lot out of there, and they went back up to where they belonged. There was angels that came down, did what God told them to do, and they went back. Those were good angels. But you had angels that came down and decided, I'm staying, I'm not going back up. They left their first estate. They sinned against God. They fell. After the flood, the Bible talks about how there's angels in chains in hell reserved until the day of judgment. People say, well, the Bible says that, don't you, know you not that we shall judge angels? Those, are those the angels that we're judging? I don't think so. Um, I think the angels that we're going to be judging is, in Hebrews it talks about, be careful that thou might entertain angels unawares, and those angel worshipers of today will try to grab that verse and apply it today, that there's angels among us today. I don't think so as much. I think that what it's talking about there is when Satan with his tail, draws a third of the stars, and he gets kicked out of heaven along with a third of the angels. We might get into some of the verses here. Gets kicked out of heaven with a third of the angels. There's going to be angels that are, that are intermingled 
And in the book of Daniel, it talks about that prophecy where those angels are going to be intermingled with us like before, talking about before the flood, what we're reading here. <clears throat> but they won't mingle with the seed like they did before. They won't be having children. So you're going to have a third of the angels coming down in the time of Jacob's trouble, and they're going to be roaming around. And at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble, when we come back, and that's the whole point of this study is, is that uh, they're saying when we come back, we go up, we, those women become men when they get their incorruptible bodies. Because when we come back, it says we come back with the angels. Say, uh, Jesus comes back with the angels. And it's his heavenly army. And it's angels. And we all come back and we go out and we gather the nations. Well, we also be gathering that third of the angels. I think that's where that verse applies when it says that we know you not that we shall judge angels. We're going to grab those third of the angels. We're going to round them up and bring them to Jesus Christ. We're going to go out and gather the nations and bring them to Jesus Christ for judgment. Okay, that's when judgment's going to happen. But you see here the sons of God is a reference to angels. Okay. Now the Bible says when we get saved, now are we the sons of God, including men and women today. Now are we the sons of God. And it doesn't, it doesn't tell, we don't know what, what it'll be like when we actually be fully become the sons of God. So when women become, we get res, uh, the resurrected, the dead in Christ rise up first. They get their new corrupt, in, uh, incorruptible body. And they go up, then we get our incorruptible body, and we go up, and now we're all the sons of God. Fully and completely. Right now I'm only two-thirds sons of God. My soul and my spirit are redeemed. My soul is not redeemed, or my soul is, soul and spirit's redeemed, but my flesh isn't redeemed. I'm still stuck in this wicked body of flesh that's been corrupted. We get that spiritual circumcision where our soul is no longer connected to this wicked, filthy body. Our soul is now connected to Jesus Christ, His perfect body. Okay. The sons of God. Yeah. So that's another thing that the brethren want to talk about. If you have any comments, make some comments, brothers of Christ. But we are called the sons of God, not the daughters of God, not the sons and daughters of God, but the sons of God. Now are we the sons of God. Jude 1.6 says, And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Those are the angels from the flood. But the Bible also talks about a third of the stars. being There's more angels that are going to end up falling out of heaven, leaving that estate, getting kicked out, and having to come down here. The biggest point about angels and cherubim is that they can sin. They can sin. So why are you worshiping something that's capable of sin instead of worshiping God Almighty through His Son, Jesus Christ, that's not capable of sin? Perfect, sinlessly perfect. That's the one point. And you read about the angels that left their first estate, talk about that one, in heaven for the food flood, and they took wives and began to bear mighty men. And we've talked about this in other studies. This is just a set and talk that those mighty men, they weren't fully uh, men and women, mankind. They weren't fully angels. There was something that was in between. So when they died, I believe that's where we start getting our evil spirits. Notice that before the flood, evil spirits, I could be wrong, correct me, if there's evil spirits mentioned, like demons per se, not just necessarily evil spirits, but demons mentioned before the flood. It's usually after the flood. You start hearing about evil spirits, a lying spirit. Um, Saul got um, vexed by uh, a lying spirit. An evil spirit came and, and vexed him. And then King David would play a harp and that evil spirit would leave him. You start hearing about these things after the flood. After the flood. So if people say, well, where did the, the evil spirits and demons and stuff come from? Those mighty men. And after the flood, those angels are in chains and hell reserved until the day of judgment. You read, read about a third of the angels that the red dragon takes with him when he falls. And the time of Jacob's trouble starts. And you have those angels. Okay, They come, they come down here and the, you think the world would be able to recognize wings on angels. Okay? But the Bible says, be, and Hebrews, be careful you might entertain angels unaware. And the Bible describes angels as men. They're always... When someone sees them, they mistake them for men. Now, those that fear God look at them and say, hey, there's something a little bit more than a man here, like how Lot treated them. And you have the lost world that look at them and just say, it's just a man. We'll treat them like we treat anybody else. 
Okay. Matthew 22, 30. Now we're going to get into why is this, this coming here about the angels. What are angels? You can do a lot more study. There's a lot more verses talking about angels going through the Bible. Anytime an angel appears, it's mistaken for a man. It's a man. So why is that a big deal? Because when you start getting to the theory that will women become angels, why do we have that theory? Why are people talking about that theory? Matthew 22, 30. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. Now this says as the angels of God. Well, it says we're going to be angels in heaven. No, this doesn't say that. It says we'll be as the angels in heaven. In heaven, not the angels that left their first estate and came down and saw the daughters of men and took them wives, married. They took wives, okay? The angels that stay and remained in heaven like they're supposed to. They came down to do the job that God told them to do as a servant and they went right back up. Those angels were going to be as them. There is no marriage. Okay. Mark 12, 25. For when they shall rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given a marriage, but are as the angels which are in heaven. So we have that part talking about as the angels in heaven. As the angels in heaven. Okay. But what do we get this? That we're going to be angels. Okay. But before we do this, as the angels in heaven. It's likeness. Now, like I said before, how angels stay in their first estate. They come down to do the work of the Lord and they go back. Uh, in the Old Testament, you have Jacob's ladder. Do you guys remember Jacob's ladder in the Old Testament? Turn to Genesis 28, 12. Genesis 28, 12. Jacob's ladder. See, it pays to actually read the Old Testament several times. I, I go through the whole te Old Testament at least two to three times a year. Listen to Alexander Scorby, and I'll pause it and talk to the Lord about this. Oh, I didn't remember hearing about this. I forgot about this. Because people don't spend a lot of time in the Old Testament. I'm not saying that, I, I'm, I'm one of those people that I primi primarily say that you need to know the Pauline epistles. You need to know what we need to get done today. We need to know how to be an ambassador for Jesus Christ today, how to be a living witness for Jesus Christ, how to be a, a verbal witness, I'm sorry, and a living witness. How you live your life, and how we know how we're supposed to live today, primarily from the Pauline epistles, but instruction righteousness we can learn from all through the Bible. From Genesis 1-1 to Revelation, even. We can learn from people's mistakes, so we don't make those mistakes. But there's a lot to learn about a lot of things, subjects like angels, throughout the whole Old Testament. You, if you want to know about cherub and what cherub are, you've got to go to the Old Testament. There's some things you've got to go to the Old Testament if you want to learn some things. Okay. In the Old Testament, you have Jacob's ladder, Genesis 28, 12. It says, And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set upon the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. Okay? Ascending and descending on it. In other words, they come down and do what God told them to do, and they go back up. Now, I don't have this in my notes, but you, you read about the cherub. I think it's I, Isaiah. Uh, Dan, uh, Daniel might talk about the cherub a little bit, but Isaiah talks about the cherub where it's like God's taxi cab. You have uh, Elijah gets carried away to heaven in a ch fiery chariot that's being pulled by a cherub, I believe. Okay, cherub have wings. They don't have to use this ladder. They have wings. They can go up to heaven, they come down. You read in Job how the sons of God have to come and present themselves to, to, um, to God. Okay, have you done, like they're coming down and doing the work of the Lord and they're going up. They're coming down and doing the work of the Lord, they're going up. And they have to present themselves to God daily saying, okay, this is what we've done for you, O Lord. We did this. You want us to do that? We did this. They're presenting themselves. But Satan also presents himself. Satan doesn't have to use that ladder. Why? Because he's a fallen cherub. He's got wings. Okay. But you've got this uh, ladder, um, what's called Jacob's Ladder. Angels are coming down and going up. They don't have wings. They need a way to come down, and they need a way to go up. Go back up. Okay? I believe this is something that we see in the Old Testament and something that we're going to see in the time of Jacob's trouble. Today, not so much. Okay, Remember, today we're supposed to live, the just shall live by faith. If we saw angels, okay, there's people who claim they saw Jesus. He's in heaven preparing a place for us. Anybody says they saw Jesus down here, you saw a, a, a demon, a, a false Christ, uh, could be Satan, pose, he loves to pose as, as Jesus Christ. 
take your pick. But it's not the real Jesus Christ of Scripture. He's in heaven preparing a place for us right now. Okay? Miracles. Why aren't there signs and wonders today? Because we're supposed to just shall live by faith. Signs were for the Jewish people when they were preached in the early book of Acts to preach in the kingdom of, of heaven. Repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. That's for the kingdom of heaven. That's not for today. For the gospel that was revealed to Paul. It's not for the gospel that was revealed to Paul. Okay? So you still had signs and wonders there as they were trying to transition, trying to say, hey, we're still going to try to offer the kingdom to you. Like Jesus was preaching. That's the gospel that Jesus was preaching before his crucifixion. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent and be baptized for the mission of sins for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. All right? But why has all that gone away? Because today the just shall live by faith. In that time of Jacob's trouble though, the body of Christ leaves, the bride of Christ leaves, there's going to be all kinds of signs and wonders. There's going to be angels coming and going again, I believe. Taking care of the 144,000 Jews that are sealed in their forehead. God seals them in their forehead. Revelation 12, 4 says, And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. I wanted to read that because I want to use passages. I want to use the Bible, not my words. But when I say the Bible says this, I kind of like to go through the Bible. So here's where we get where a third of the stars are kicked down okay, in the time of Jacob's trouble. Hebrews 13.2, it says, Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained strange, uh, angels unawares. In the time of Jacob's trouble, I believe it kicks up. You have the third of the angels that are going to be down here that are the fallen angels. Then you're going to have, this is, Hebrews is written to the Jews in the time of Jacob, Jews of today that are going to be going into the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, so there's some things from Hebrews you can get that are for today, that, you know, that, that try to preach the gospel again to the Jews again, trying to say, hey, you need to get saved today. You don't want to go into that time period. But then it starts going into that time period. In that time period, the 144,000 Jews that are sealed in their forehead, there are going to be angels, good angels, that are coming and going, doing the work of the Lord in that time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Be careful. You might entertain angels unawares. Be careful of people trying to really push this hardcore for today. People who just, it's like almost like they worship angels. Be careful of that, brothers and Christ. Daniel chapter 2, verse 43. Here's where it is. Daniel, Daniel chapter 2, verse 43. Remember in the Old Testament, you had the fallen angels. They mingled with the seed of men. They took wives. They had children. Those children were mighty men. They were above man, but below angels. Okay. When this happens again in the time of Jacob's trouble, it won't be like that. They won't mingle with the seed. This is where we get it. Daniel chapter 2, verse 43. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seeds of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And remember, when the angels came down, they were men. It said they took wives. They didn't take, there was no women angels that took husbands. It was angels that took wives. They were men. Right. Now, I don't believe that there are many angels, if any, roaming about today as they were in the old as much as they were in the Old Testament, or they will be in the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? If I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, show me scripture. Okay? Show me scripture. I'll repent. Okay? I'll learn something new. Praise God. But today we're the just shall live by faith. God has given the, those who are saved, we have the Holy Spirit, the comforter. God has given us his perfect written word to hide in our hearts and live it. Okay? Back in the Old Testament, they didn't have the Holy Spirit. Some people did, but not everyone had the Holy Spirit. In the time of Jacob's trouble, I don't know how it's going to work, but I don't think that everyone's going to have the Holy Spirit. In the time of Jacob's trouble, you have to endure to the end, and then thou shalt be saved. I don't think they have the Holy Spirit in the time of Jacob's trouble, as far as in them. I think it's something that they have to, there's commandments they have to keep, along with the faith, the testimony of Jesus Christ. Keep his commandments and the testimony of Jesus Christ. I don't think they don't have the Holy Spirit in them. They're not sealed. The Bible says they're not sealed until the day of redemption. Okay. You've got to make it to the end in order to be saved. They're not present tense saved in the time of Jacob's trouble. But like I said, 
That's why there's angels involved, messengers of God coming down and doing the work and passing on messages and doing the work because the Bible says the Holy Spirit, what he hears, that shall he speak. God speaks directly to his children, the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, to the Holy Spirit through his word, by the Holy Spirit through his word. He speaks to us. He tells us we get that conviction, hey, don't do that, don't do that. See, our conscience can say, don't do that, but then the Holy Spirit, God can speak through the Holy Spirit. Have you read something or have another brother in Christ with the Holy Spirit come to you, be a messenger for God each, to each other, and say, hey, the Bible says what you're doing is wrong. And it convicts your heart, and the Holy Spirit in you goes, he's right, what you're doing is wrong. Right? Angels aren't needed that much right now. They were in the Old Testament, and they are going to be in the time of Jacob's trouble. Romans 8.38, Romans 8.38 for I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Separate us, who's the us, save sinners today. In that time of Jacob's trouble, a lot of this stuff can separate you from the love of God. In the time of Jacob's trouble. But today... You have the Holy Spirit in you. You're sealed into the day of redemption. You're bought with a price. You're not your own. In that time of Jacob's trouble, however, you're going to have fallen angels that are intermingling with people, and you're going to have angels, I believe good angels, from that haven't fallen, that are going to be coming down and helping the Jewish people out when they're in the wilderness to help them take care of the Jewish people in the wilderness. Amen. But there's going to be principalities and powers in that time of Jacob's trouble. you got the uh, false prophet. you got the man of sin, the son of perdition. Right? you got the, the, uh, the image of the beast that's brought to life. That strong delusion that's talked about in 2 Thessalonians 2, that strong delusion in that time period. You're going to have a man set himself up as Jesus Christ, as the Messiah, the Christ, as God manifest in the flesh. I'm God. Worship me. And the world as a whole is going to just buy it. Why? Because a lot of things you see mentioned here can separate you in that time period. Nor angels. Okay? It's, the worst, it's going to be the worst time period in history. The body of Christ, brothers and Christ, fear not. We don't have to go through it. Don't get distracted by it and don't get fearful of it. We're not going to be going through it. Stay focused. I always say this. Stay focused, brothers and sisters Christ, on the mission. Be an ambassador for Jesus Christ. Be a verbal witness and a living witness. Keeping your eyes on the Jesus Christ is coming. The catching away of the body of Christ. That blessed hope. That's where your eyes are supposed to be on. Not the time of Jacob's trouble. Not what's really going on. We can learn from it. Absolutely. But don't get distracted by it. Okay? Today, there's nothing, no height, nor depth, nor any other creature that shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Don't get fearful. We're not given a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. See the power, love, and a sound mind? I think it is power, love, and a sound mind. We're here to do the work of the Lord. We're His messengers. Okay? The ministry of reconciliation. We're ambassadors for Jesus Christ. We're his messengers. Angels were the messengers in the Old Testament for the most part. And then he started peaking, speaking through prophets that had the Holy Spirit. So you had prophets with the Holy Spirit. And you had um, angels that were messengers for God. Today the body of Christ is the messengers of God. We're out there preaching the truth to the world. We're out there warning the world of where they're heading. And a lot of times we're warning the world at the time of Jacob's trouble, saying, hey, you don't want to go into that time period. Okay. And 2 Corinthians 11, 14 is where we read, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore his ministers are also transformed into the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. We get that from 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen. 14. Galatians 1, 8. Galatians 1, 8 we read. My chickens are kind of going off. Galatians 1.8 But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. This is Paul. Paul's got the gospel that's given to him by God. Repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, 
Confess both in prayer and ask God to save you. Okay? Uh, repentance. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrows of the world worketh death. Repentance is having godly sorrow for your personal sins and what the cost of those sins are. Hell. You're sorry about it. You have sorrow. You regret ever sinning against God. You don't want to go to hell and you regret sinning against God. You wish you had never sinned against God. You just have that sorrow. I'm so sorry, Lord. What do I do? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4 talk about how that Jesus died for our sins and was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. All right. The finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, it is finished that the blood that was shed on the cross is God's blood. And only that blood can wash your sins away. God the Father's blood was shed on the cross through His Son, Jesus Christ. The Bible says, With the heart man believeth unto righteousness, in the book of Romans, With the heart man believeth unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation, showing that you're not ashamed. That's the verbal witness telling the world what Jesus did for you. Jesus saved me. I'm a dirty, rotten, filthy, low-down, no-good sinner. I repented. I believed in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. And you confess both those in prayer, and you ask God to save you. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's the gospel that was revealed to Paul for today. Notice, repent and be baptized for the mission of sins is not in there. Bapti water baptism is not in there. Today, we're to get spiritually baptized. I might do a video on that someday. Am I a Baptist? No. That's, that's for the kingdom of heaven. That's for the Jews. That's not for the time of the Gentiles. Okay. But you have him warning about an angel that's, that preaches another gospel. And in Revelation 14, 6, you, you read, And I saw another angel. In Revelation 14, 6, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and, gospel, and people. The gospel of the kingdom mixed with the gospel of today, with works added to it in the time of Jacob's trouble. More, more than anything, they're going to go back to the king, preaching the kingdom of heaven the way they did in the book of Acts. You crucified your king to the Jewish people. You crucified your king, he was buried, and he rose again the third day. You crucified him, and he took on the sins of the world, the consequences of the sins of the world. He died for the sins and was buried and rose again. You crucified your king. You need to accept your king. He's coming back soon. In the time of Jacob's trouble, he will be coming back soon. You have a set time period now, seven years. He will be coming back soon. They will be preaching the gospel of the kingdom mixed in a little bit with the gospel for today like they were in the book of Acts, the transition book. That's what I believe is going to happen. Um, and you read, I'll have it in here somewhere, but you'll read that the gospel there is keeping the testimony of Jesus Christ and... The commandments of God. Don't take the mark. Don't worship the beast. And you have to believe in, in Jesus Christ. That you crucified your king. That he, he died for your sins. Was buried and rose again the third day. According to the scriptures. There's going to be two parts to the gospel in that time period. Okay? And you're not sealed into the day of redemption in that time period. You have to endure to the end. And then you shall be saved. You have to door into the end where you lose your head for Jesus Christ. Talks about saints losing their heads for Jesus Christ, dying for Jesus Christ, or if you end up living clear to the end, you still have to endure to the end. Okay. Revelation 12, 17 says, And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Two parts. It's a different gospel. So there's an angel in that time period preaching a different gospel. It's not for us. That's how we know that time period is not for us. There's a lot of evidence that we know the time of Jacob's trouble is not for the body of Christ. But that's one of the big ones. Paul says, here's the gospel for today, for the time of the Gentiles. Here's another gospel being preached in the time of Jacob's trouble. See, when you say it according to the Bible, it shows there are two different time periods. Time of the Gentiles, time of, of Jacob's trouble. 
but they try to erase the Bible definition of time of the Gentiles and replace it with the church age. No, it's the time of the Gentiles. It's when salvation went out to the world. First, when Jesus was preaching the kingdom of heaven, repent and be baptized for the mission of sins, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's only for the Jewish people, for salvation is of the Jews. This new gospel that's presented to Paul is for the time of, of the Gentiles when salvation went out to the world. Now Jews and Gentiles can get saved. Anybody can get saved. Okay, but you get back to the Jewish pe the, the time of Jacob's trouble, God's going to go back to dealing with the Jews. Okay. But without getting far off on a rabbit shell, the angel in Galatians 1.8, I believe, is... is Galatians 1.8 But though we were an angel Remember Galatians 1.8 says But though we were an angel from heaven Preach any other gospel I believe that angel that he's warning us about Is Satan Remember what Satan does He transforms himself into an angel of light okay. Today Today in the time of, It's the time of the Gentiles When you have people saying I had a vision Or I had a dream of angels Or I had a vision of Satan of Jesus coming down and preaching me the way, the truth, and the life that goes against his word, you have him dealing with Satan, transforming himself into an angel of light. Demons. Okay. But in that time period of Jacob, time of Jacob's trouble, you're going to have an angel that's from the Lord going through and preaching the new gospel. There's going to, there's going to be a new gospel. I've always said this, brother, says Christ, God is always saving man by his grace from Genesis 1-1 to the time of Jacob's trouble to the day of the Lord. It's always God dealing with mankind through his grace, having grace for mankind, saving mankind by his grace. How you find that grace is what's different in all the different dispensations. Okay? How you find God's saving grace. God sets the standard and says, you come to me on, on the terms that I want. What are the terms today? We already talked about it. Repent and believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Confess both in prayer and ask God to save you. Come to him broken in a contrite spirit, which is almost in every dispensation. But the belief is in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. In that time period of Jacob's trouble, now there's works added. In the Old Testament, you did animal sacrifices to find God's grace. You did your best to keep God's commands, and when you failed, you did animal sacrifices. You came to him broken in a contrite spirit, and you did an animal sacrifice to cover that sin. And then you found God's grace in the Old Testament. Right? It's different on how to find God's grace, but God's grace is always there. Don't be deceived that the, the gospel's been the same all the time. The gospel's been the same from Genesis 1 to... That's a lie. Where'd they get that from? Not from the Lord. Not from the Holy Spirit, and not from His Word. Okay. So remember, there's counterfeits today, brothers and Christ. There's counterfeits. Okay. Satan is not an angel, but he counterfeits being an angel. Why does Satan counterfeit himself being an angel? Well, what is Jesus called in the Old Testament? He's called the angel of the Lord. An angel of the Lord, the angel of the Lord, that man, the captain of the host of heaven, but he's also referred to as an angel of the Lord. And what does Satan want to be? He wants to be God. He wants to be like the Most High. So what's he do? He transforms himself and tries to counterfeit Jesus Christ. God manifests in the flesh, the Son of God. Be careful of counterfeits. In the time of Jacob's trouble, death, burial, and resurrection to the catching away. Okay. In the, oh, I'm sorry. In the time of the Gentiles. In the time of the Gentiles, we just talked about that. Death, burial, and resurrection to the catching away. You know, we're supposed to repent. Repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, confess both in prayer, and ask God to save you. And when God saves you, He seals you. You're bought with a price. You're not your own. Then God starts working on you because you're in Christ Jesus, making you wisdom. Uh, righteousness, uh, sanctification, and redemption. He starts preparing you to be a vessel used of God, a child of God today. There's going to be a changed life. You're going to be a new creature in Christ Jesus, if any man be in Christ. Okay, But not so much in the Old Testament. 
Colossians chapter 2, 18. Colossians chapter 2, 18 says, Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humanity and worshiping of angels, introducing into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. The worshiping of angels. Okay. What's the number one thing that Satan always offers people? He offers them godhood. What did he offer Eve? Remember, Eve was deceived, not Adam. Adam chose to eat the apple. Uh, it's not an apple. He chose to eat from the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil to die with his, his wife. But Eve was deceived. And what did Satan offer Eve? Godhood. You shall be like the Most High, knowing good and evil. You, you'll be like, you, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. He shall offer them Godhood. What does Satan offer people today to keep them from truly getting saved and keeping them from the truth? To get them to ignore you and me, brothers, Jesus Christ, when we're trying to preach the truth. He offers them Godhood. You can be as gods, knowing good and evil. Yea, hath God said. You can have that attitude, yea, hath God said, because you're lowercase g gods. You're gods of your own. A better rendering would be, oh, that's just your interpretation. I can live the way I want to live because I'm the boss. I'm the God of my own life. That's their attitude. That's what Satan offers them. That's what's making it so hard today to lead people to Christ. They've got to drop that, I'm the boss. It's my way or the highway. They've got to drop that attitude. Okay. Jude 1.14 Jude 1.14. Sorry, that's a big rabbit trail trying to talk about angels for a while. Sorry, that's how you go off on a rabbit trail. I want to talk about angels a little bit because the brothers. we're going to get back to the brother's question. But talking about angels, what they are, their purpose, what they're used for, okay, to serve God as messengers. Jude 1.14. And Enoch, we're going to get back to the question of the brother cross. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these things, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints. When Jesus comes back at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble, we see it, where he's coming back with, back with his saints. And today, brothers and sisters, Christ, anybody who's saved and born again, truly saved and born again, is a saint. Okay? Don't fall for false religions like Catholicism where you have to have their permission and they have to, you have to pass all of these their tests and then after you're dead for about a hundred to 500 years, then you can be considered a saint or something. They always pervert the Word of God. Always. We come back with 10,000 of the saints. He's going to come back with an army. Jesus Christ is going to come back with an army. Who's that army? It's saints. Some people are saying it's us. Some people say it's us and the Old Testament saints. It's the New Testament saints and the Old Testament saints. We're all coming back together. Verse 15, to execute judgment upon all. Remember we talked about notice that we shall be judged angels. If you suffer with him, you shall also reign with him. I think there's a lot of people, this is just me, talking. This, remember, this is a sit down and talk. I believe there's going to be a lot of, of brethren that get left behind in heaven and don't get to come down because they didn't suffer for Jesus Christ. They started compromising. Things down here became more important than things up here, up there. They started compromising, and they weren't suffering for Jesus Christ anymore. You want to rule and reign with Jesus Christ when He comes down? You want to be one of these saints with, that comes down with Jesus Christ? You need to suffer for Jesus Christ. And you don't have to go out of your way to pick a fight. You don't have to go out of your way to try to get people to beat you up. You just have to be a verbal and living witness for Jesus Christ. Taking this book, hiding your heart, living it, and not backing down. And you'll see the suffering. Remember that, I don't can't remember if it was a hymn or not, but it talks about, have you counted the cost? You, there's one that counts your blessings one by one, see what the Lord has done, but have you counted the cost? Serving Jesus Christ and being saved People always get on, the easy believers and hate this. When you truly get saved and born again and God saves you and God starts making you wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and getting you prepared for redemption, the catching away of the body of Christ, He's redeemed to our soul and our spirit present tense when you get saved, but preparing our bodies to be redeemed, living a life of Christ, being a verbal witness and a living witness, it costs it's cost me, brothers, says Christ. 
And I've talked about this in studies. I've lost family members. I've lost my daughter to the world. Then I lost my daughter in death. I lost my ex-wife. She, she was of the world and she wouldn't give her life to Jesus Christ. Truly give her life to Jesus Christ. She had that mentality that Satan offered her. Uh, you can be as God's. My way. I'm the boss. I can do what I want when I want. That's not someone who's saved. Someone who's saved falls on their knees and says, Lord, show me what you want. Lord, I want to live your way. I want to please you. And don't get me wrong, brothers and Christ, I've said this before. When I was newly saved, there's some sins that I held on to like a little child. No, no, I don't want to. And God would smack me upside the head to get me to let go of certain sins. It's called chastisement. There's some people who do that. I understand. But you come across those people that try to justify sin. There's nothing wrong with sin. I knew it was wrong. I just had a hard time letting go of some sins when it came to sanctification. I, I'm not this great holy man that could just get rid of everything just like that. Uh, God really had to smack me upside the head on some things. Okay, especially with addictions. All right? But when you have people that stand there and vehemently defend, 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 defend sin and go against the Bible, defend worldliness and go against the Bible, you're not dealing with someone who gave their life to Jesus Christ. Brother Christ, today you're going to suffer for Jesus Christ by just living for Him. Making sure your home is abstain from all appearance of evil, free home. Get all the sin out. When you walk around and people want to tell dirty jokes, you say, I'm sorry, I, I'm not into those jokes. God says they're a sin. You always got to bring God into it. God said that's sinful and wicked. I'm not going to joke about that. God says sodomy is an abomination in His sight. I'm not going to have anything to do with jokes about sodomy, and I'm not going to promote sodomy in any way, shape, or form. I'm going to call it out for what it is. It's an abomination in God's sight, and it's an abomination in my sight. Feminism, okay, is rebelling against God, and rebelling against God is as the sin of witchcraft in the Bible. Feminism is all about women trying to cross that boundary that God set into the man's boundary and saying we can be men. That's all feminism is. It's not about protect. They were lied to. It's not about protecting women. It's not about being a woman. Feminism is 100% about being a man and destroying the woman. Not protecting the woman, destroying the woman. And it's been very successful here in America. Very successful. You say, hey, I'm against that stuff and I don't want to have anything to do with that stuff. I'm going to live for Jesus Christ every day and I'm going to live His way and stand for Him. You're going to suffer. You're going to lose things. Okay, you're going to suffer for Jesus Christ. It's guaranteed if you live for Him. When you stop suffering for Jesus Christ, you know what happens? It's almost like it goes hand in hand. When you start realizing you're not really suffering for Jesus Christ much, it's because you're not living for Him much. Okay? I'm not saying everybody's going to hate you. I have neighbors. They don't, they don't want to hang out with me, but we help each other out when time comes to help each other out. You know, the Bible says, if it be possible, live peacefully among all men, if it be possible. I got one guy up here that, um, he just moved into a house up the way, and I walked by and was talking with him, and we got to talk, and come to find out he's a Catholic. And when I try to tell him about the scriptures and where he gets the Catholic Bibles, and he's talking about saints, he's talking about Paul, uh, Peter being the first pope, and, and uh, Mary, you know, being a perpetual virgin, queen of heaven and everything. And I got to talking to him and saying, hey, I tried to preach truth to him. And you guess what happened the next day? I went walking up there. He put a statue of Mary out there right in the front, right where everybody has to see it walking by. It wasn't there before we had that talk, but he put it out there after we had that talk. And now I get to be vexed by that every day walking up. And I just, it's called suffering. I don't regret talking to that man trying to preach truth to him. Some people, like brethren, would be like, man, I wish I never talked to him. Maybe he wouldn't have put that statue out, and then I wouldn't have to put up with that. Brothers says Christ, if you preach truth and live the truth, they're going to do things to make your life difficult. They're going to do things to vex you, purposely vex you. Okay. If you suffer with him, you shall reign with him. That's what these people are that are coming back. Okay, they, That's being talked about here in Jude. Okay. 10,000 of his saints. Okay? And Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. 
His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. See, no one ever draws Jesus Christ coming back the way he's coming back. I mean, I, I love Peter Ruckman, brother in Christ, he's in heaven right now, but he'd always draw the Antichrist as Jesus Christ as he comes back, because that's not how he looks. The Bible in Revelation clearly points out how Satan, uh, uh, Satan the Antichrist, is coming, uh, the ultimate Antichrist. You read, I used to say that he's not called an Antichrist, but if you actually read the book of John, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, so I think it's 1st John, it says, and that Antichrist that shall be. It's talking about the man of sin, the son of perdition. So he is called an Antichrist. But you have Jesus coming back. He's got white hair, like wool. Hair that's white as wool. Not the texture, but the color of his hair is white. Okay, his eyes are as a flame of fire. His feet are as like fine brass. But they never draw him that way. I wonder why. 13, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, with white, fine linen, white and clean. There's an army that comes back to them, the saints. He said, what does that have to do with angels? Well, in Mark 8.38, Mark 8.38, we go back to where Jesus is prophesying of when he's going to come back. When the, the, the end times, when shall those days be, Lord? When the end of, the, the end of days, the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. Mark 8, 38. Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him also shall the Son of Man. Remember what it said, it talks about capital S, Son of Man. He's talking about the kingdom of heaven. The physical kingdom that's sometimes referred to as the kingdom of God or the day of the Lord. When it says Son of God, he's talking about this, the kingdom of God when it's an, only a reference to the spiritual kingdom. Okay, This is the Son of Man referring to Jesus' bloodline through Mary going back to King David. He's their king. Okay, Of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. So, you have one side saying saints are coming back, then we talk about an army coming back, and then it says they're angels. Holy angels. See? How do we become holy angels? Well, this body of wicked flesh has to be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. This corruption shall put on incorruption. This mortality must put on immortality. Right? Matthew 25, 31. When the Son of Man shall come in the glory and all of the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. He's going to set himself up and he's going to rule and reign with a rod of iron for a thousand years. But it says he comes back with angels, the holy angels. But it also says he comes back with saints. That's us. He comes back with us, but then he comes back with holy angels. They're one and the same. In that we're going to become angels. Okay. Luke 9.26 For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed. When he shall come in the, his own glory and in his Father's and of the holy angels. Revelation 5.11 we read, and I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands. That's us, I believe. We're called angels. It's just, we're going to be angels when we get to heaven. So that's where we get the thing where we're going to be angels when we get to heaven. And then it brings in this thing that, that will women become men in, in heaven? Because angels are men. I tend to lean towards yes. It, could there be a different uh, uh, brand, uh, how do you say it, branch or type of angel? Because you have Michael and Gabriel are archangels. They're a different type of angel, but they're still both men. They appear as men. No wings. They just appear as men. So that's where you get the thing. We become angels when we go to heaven. We know what angels are. We know the whole purpose of angels to serve God for all eternity. They're, they're his messengers. Right. to do the work of the Lord. And 
we become angels. So when angel, so at the catching away of the body of Christ, when women get their incorruptible bodies, will they become men? I, I said, it, I lean towards yes, I do, I lean towards yes, but I can't be 100% dogmatic on it because, like I said, there could be a different type of angel. But more than anything, by the way everything pushes and the way everything looks, how we're called the sons of God, the angels in the Old Testament are called the sons of God, they're men. Today the body of Christ is called the sons of God and will be fully redeemed at some time and we're still going to be called the sons of God, not sons and daughters of God, but sons of God. Like I said, I still lean towards that we're all going to be angels, and angels are men, okay, in the resurrection. Now, Brother in Christ brought up the brass, that question, brought up a good point. In Revelation 5.10 it says, And hast made us unto our king, a God, kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Remember, if you suffer with him, you shall reign with him. 2 Timothy 2.12 If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us millennial the millennial kingdom, the inheritance. To rule and reign with him. Not denying us a, a, a salvation, but denying us that inheritance. Okay? And if that's true, he's talking about, he says, if that's true and we come back and we're rulers, we're kings and priests, 1 Timothy 2.12 says, But I suffer not a woman to teach nor to exert authority over the man, but to be in silence. If there are women angels, wouldn't they be breaking this? Because... The thousand-year reign is going to go back to. They're going to go back to keeping the Sabbath day. They're going to go back to keeping a lot of the old Levitical laws. Okay, um, a lot of things are going to come back uh, in that time period. And one of the things is, is that order of authority is still going to be there. God, man, woman, and child. That order of authority is still going to be there. So if they became men, they would be able to rule and reign. They were able to, like the angels, but it's an angel that looks like a man, I'm sorry. An angel, they're not going to become men, but angels that look like men. Okay, they're going to become angels. If we all become angels and all angels look like men, then we'll be able to be kings and priests. Not queens and priestesses, but kings and priests. That's a very good point. That's a very good point that that brother made, okay? So that's another good point brought up about this. So brothers and sisters of Christ, there's a teaching, and I agree with the teaching, that we will become angels. Okay? And when we become angels, what are angels? Angels are men. So at the resurrection, for the long story short, I know i got kind of a rabbit trail a little bit sometimes, but brothers and sisters of Christ just talking about angels. Just wanted to talk. This is just a set and talk, brothers and sisters. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you get into it a little bit more. Maybe you can show me some things that I left out or some things where, I, if I'm wrong a little bit here. This is just a set and talk, brothers and sisters Christ, and I long for those days. I really do. My warning here at the very end, and then we're going to end this, my warning, though, to the brethren is, is be careful. It's okay to get into what we did trying to figure out for the sisters in Christ if you're going to be angels someday. And what are angels? They look like men. Angels look like men. Okay? okay? There's nothing wrong with looking into this. But what's more important than looking into this, sisters in Christ and brothers in Christ, but mainly, point, uh, mainly for my sisters in Christ, is today you need to focus hardcore on the boundary that God set for you as a woman. Today there is a woman. Today there is a man. And God has set a boundary for the women that they're to stay in and they're not to leave it. And God has set a boundary for the men that they're supposed to stay in and they're not supposed to leave it. There is a man, there, I'm sorry, there is a man and there is a woman today. That's what matters. We need to live for today and we need to keep our eyes on that blessed hope. It's okay to talk about this, but don't get so distracted by this that you can get somebody whispering in your ear and trying to get you from this boundary to this boundary, sisters in Christ. Stay in the boundary that God got, set you in. Okay, we have studies on that. Okay. Don't get sidetracked thinking that, okay, if someday I'm going to become an angel and angels are men, then it's no big deal if I start acting like a man today and get a little head start. Uh, no, no, no. Don't get de deceived. Don't get distracted. Stay in the boundary that God set for you. Almost like a circle. Stay in the boundary that God set to you. I always draw two circles. Physically, the circles are completely separate. Spiritually, the circles will overlap. There's still some things that only men can do spiritually as far as only men can be preacher, uh, uh, bishops, deacons, ordained elders, and there's some things that women do. Okay. 
help and raise their children in the admonition of the Lord and everything. There's things, spiritually, the, 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 the two boundaries will overlap. There's a lot of things we do together spiritually. We pray, we read the Word of God, we listen to Bible studies, we hide God's Word in our heart and we live it. We learn things, okay? We're both supposed to be witnesses for Jesus Christ. We're both in the ministry of reconciliation. We're both ambassadors for Jesus Christ. Both the men and women, we're both ambassadors for Jesus Christ. We're supposed to be a verbal witness and a living witness. But when it comes to the physical boundaries, there's two separate boundaries that God set. Don't get distracted. Stay focused hardcore on the boundary that God set for you, whether you're a man or you're a woman. Okay, don't let this distract you too much. Okay, brothers and sisters of Christ. So, brother, that was a good point. I hope we had a great talk, brothers and sisters of Christ, about the Word of God. I'm praying for you. I pray everything's going great. We're looking for this summer to be here. Praise God. Uh, we've had a long, rainy, uh, snowy, super cold winter this year. And a lot of us, brothers and sisters of Christ, we're desperately looking forward. I got my garden started because we, we had temperatures of 90 degrees. Uh, 80 to 90 degrees, so I started planting the garden, and I hope we don't have a cold front, it'll ruin everything, but I went ahead and started planting the garden, and I started to get some work done outside, trimming hedges and whatnot, and uh, we're, all, we're all excited to get outside, hopefully some of us are, are excited to get outside and start working with our hands and to get to be outdoors, and I'm really looking forward to that. But, so, Brother Sister Christ, please, please, Brother Sister Christ, don't faint, don't falter. Done all to stand. Stand, stand, stand. Okay? Uh, keep living for Jesus Christ every day. Be a verbal witness. Be a living witness. And Jesus could call us home anytime now. Okay? Live your life as if Jesus Christ could call us home today. If, I always say tomorrow. If Jesus Christ, if you knew that God was going to call us home tomorrow, and you looked at your life as a Christian, what have you done for the Lord? What have you put off? Remember that statement, don't put off to tomorrow what you can get done today? What have you put off? Get busy living for the Lord every day as if today's the last day and God's going to call us home. Brother says Christ, because I believe it's going to happen anytime, especially with what we see going on around the world. It can happen anytime. Our mission doesn't change no matter what happens out there in the world. Don't let the world distract you from the mission. Being a, a verbal witness and a living witness for Jesus Christ. So I'll end this with grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you, brothers and sisters Christ, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next study.